special guest this evening is Prof. Uh, Advocate Bonke Clayton uh, Dumisa. Uh, I've given all his names. Um, he was born in Umlazi many, many decades ago. Uh, he now stays in Westville. Uh, he's been an academic professor of economics uh, for more than 20 years. He's also a businessman. Other people, they call him a businessman come a lawyer. Um, he's a chair of Dumisa Invest. Um, he is highly, highly learned. There's something about him and the number seven, you know. Uh, as I was trying to research about him, I found that there's something about him and seven. He comes from a family of seven kids. Uh, you know, where he used to stay, there were, there were forced removals in 1967. Uh, he was released from, you know, um, from jail uh, during the 1976, uh, you know, uh, riots uh, on the seventh month. That was in 1977. He's run about seven comrades, and he's got seven degrees. Uh, become accounting from the National University of Lesotho, become honors from UNISA, MBA from Bentley University in Massachusetts, uh, U USA, MSc from the London School of Economics and Political Sciences, DBA from U University of Durban Westville, LLB from UNISUL, and LLM from UKZN. So um, just from that profile, you will know that uh, this is no ordinary man. Uh, he loves, you know, feeding his brain. And uh, I'm sure as he was listening yesterday to the president, you know, uh, telling us about the, the economic, uh, social economic package, uh, there's a lot that he picked up and he's going to unpack that for us. Uh, Prof. Welcome to the Dr. Fundi channel. Uh, welcome and uh, apologies for the technical issues that happened earlier. Uh, but it's always important that uh, one doesn't give up. So we're going to have a nice, uh, you know, 45 minutes of discussion. Uh, and really, our discussions today, uh, they relate to what was unveiled yesterday by our president. Uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, further economic and social measures in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So welcome, Prof. Yes, good evening, Dr. Nyati. When, when you went on with that CV, it was worrying me whether it's my obituary now. But, uh... <laughs> you are far from that. Not a man who has run seven, you know, comrades, <laughs> uh, who's still very active, uh, there's, there's no way, there's no way where, you know, uh, we can think that way. But anyway, Prof, uh, just about the business of uh, today's uh, discussion. I'm sure you were watching like many South Africans, you know, the president communicating what uh, he has, uh, you know, um, proposed with his committee or command to try and uh, help South Africans uh, from an economic point of view. Uh, individuals and businesses. Now, what's your overall view of what was announced yesterday? Dr. Nyati, when we grew up, I used to be a DJ and uh, there was one singer who was very naughty, yes. Billy. She sang a song which said, making the best of the worst situation. Yes. That's effectively what happened last night when the state president had to make that address, understanding that we do not have money in South Africa. We are in a situation where we've been downgraded by Moody's, which was the last uh, international credit rating agency, which gave us an investment grade. And immediately a week thereafter, you had Fitch who had downgraded us with S&P three years ago, coming back to say, even though you are in junk status, we're still going to push you even further down. So that's, that's the situation. 
now he had to say, let us come up with some money to, to try and solve and, and save the situation because the COVID-19 uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic has really affected the economy of South Africa. But where was he going to find the money? Let me just start by explaining that one because I had many people saying, but the government has been saying, we don't have money, we don't have money. So how did they get this 500 billion? The 500 billion, of that 500 billion, you'll find that only about 170 billion is new money. With the other amounts, they have been reprioritized. What do we mean by reprioritized? In, in government terms, what happens is they, in parliament, they adopt and, 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 and vote for different departments. But within those departments, you have line items to say, this will do this, this will do this, this will do that. So they went back to the departments to say, we need money, we don't have money. What can you reprioritize and shift to us in order to use that? So that is what happened. And, and then, of course, the new man out of this, as I said, it was about 170 billion rands. Of that, they, 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 also, they had to go outside then and say, okay, who can give us some money? There was this big fight about IMF, if ever we can ever use it because of its structural adjustment programs, the SAPs. IMF did come out and say to African countries and other countries, we've got a special fund which we can use for different countries and it's only, the loans are only available at 1%. Where do you find a loan for only 1%? So you've had to, to look at different things and the situation was okay for, for South Africa to say, we can use that. So that explains the 500 billion rands for those who want to make an issue to say, where did the money come from? And then the yeah. question was, how far can this money go? That's why you find then that, as we'll discuss later, they came up with packages which says for only six months up until October. And Dr. Inyati, you are an expert on COVID issues. I am not. You saw, you, you, you followed well the presentation by Dr. Zuelim Kize and Professor Abdul Karim. Karim when yes. they spoke about this whole issue about the September plateau, that the, this thing will, will, will have, will flatten here, go up, flatten there, and then we'll have the major plateau in, in September. So it's not by any coincidence then that this, this, different relief measures will end in October. So that's the thing, but the question then was, how much can we actually agree on for these things? Because I keep on referring to South Africa being nearly bankrupt, not having money. They had to do things which could save the situation and yet don't make South Africa bankrupt and even worse than where we were. Yes. For that, it is really for that reason then that the amounts which they, they've come up with are low in relative terms, but under the circumstances, they, they, had, they had to say that's the best we can, we, we can give you. And they split this between what can we do to save lives? So that's the amount, the, the social grants which at the right time when you want me to start dealing with them, yeah. I will deal with. And then they also have had to say, let us also save livelihoods. So it's a question of balancing between lives. So there's the money which goes to social grants, etc. And then livelihoods. If ever we spent all the money trying to stop COVID, uh, coronavirus pandemic, without making sure that there will be an economy at the end of this, then South Africa is going to go down and we cannot have the best health system if ever I don't have the best economic environment. So that's what I'm referring to when I'm talking about the livelihoods then. And for me, the, it, was the back, it was a very good balancing act, but at the 
end of the day, after we've looked at these figures, we've got to ask ourselves, is this sustainable? Yes. Now let's look at what they tried to do for the, for the community, if ever you want me to start dealing with that. Yes, now can, can I just ask one, one question, uh, Prof, before we get to the detail. Um, mm -hmm. The issue about IMF, the, now, you know, in the social media platforms, a lot of commentary was around how can we go to IMF? Uh, people still remember what happened in the 70s and 80s with IMF and their structural adjustment programs. Now, do you think an IMF in 2020 is a different IMF to the IMF that caused a lot of harm to those uh, countries that were given money in the 70s and 80s? I'm one of those people who have always been against the IMF because of precisely those uh, SAPs, the structural adjustment programs. But it was stressed. And what is interesting is that the person who was explaining this in the media was none other than uh, Jesse Duarte. And you know, they, they are, there are those things about Jesse Duarte not being the best friend of the president. And she was the one who was explaining that the IMF under this particular COVID related fund is not is only imposing one percent there are no structural adjustment programs attached to it and oh. then it removed that debate personally as well if ever they, they this had anything to do with structural adjustment programs i would simply say i don't agree with that yeah. so we need, we need to be very flexible to and to understand when the situations are different. So yes. the circumstances, I, I actually, f I fully support. Yes, yes. Now, that was one of the things that were, was coming through, Prof. Uh, the second one, uh, some people uh, were talking about why did we not just print money? Why did we go and borrow money? <laughs> now, just, just you, you know, and, then, and there's a lot of pseudo-economists out there uh, prof, you know, they talk about quantitative easing or quantity <laughs> easing and all of that. Just just for, for lay people like us, what is this thing about printing money and quantitative easing in layman's terms, Prof? Okay, I'm not going to complicate it, Dr. Nyati. Yeah. When we print money in any country, you just don't wake up and say we must print money. We, we must have some underlying factors which support the amount, the quantity of money which is outside there in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the market. That's why the, I'm not going to even complicate it. The people who, who are into economics will tell you that you've got money and then you've got what is called the M3 when you start including the amount of debt that you give out there because it increases the amount of money which is in circulation. So when you print money, you take all of those things into consideration, and it has to have some relevance to the economic environment of the country. You cannot have a country which is, let me not mention countries, because some people may be, may be hurt, but a country which has got a very low economic activity, printing as much money as the US is printing or the UK. There must be a link. In the past, they used to have the gold standard where they said, you must have so much gold. Okay, the gold standards disappeared, but that did not mean then that you can just grow money. As I keep on saying, money does not grow on trees. So those yes. people say you just had to print money. Really, they don't, they don't understand the concept. Let me explain why it does, it does not make sense to just print a lot of money, which is not related to the level of your economy. The more money which is in circulation in, in, in the country, then the lower the value of your currency. So your currency will, will only be as strong as when there is a certain level, a level of correlation between the amount of money in circulation and the level of the economy in the country. So if ever we just printed money, I heard some people saying, you, just have, you should have just printed 500 billion. 
Let me use an example. In, with our neighbor, north of Limpopo, in Zimbabwe, they did exactly that. They just went on printing money. I actually have, uh, I cannot remember whether it's 10 million Zim dollars or how many million Zim dollars. And I, I, I've actually framed it somewhere because they, it had no value. We cannot do that in South Africa. Now coming to the issue about quantitative easing. When people talk about quantitative easing, that was used a lot in the US and in, in other countries during the 2008 uh, global meltdown. It worked to a certain extent and, it, 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 and it, it, it was not as effective. What happens with quantitative easing? We are in a country where you have almost 0% inflation. So you, what you do then is you, you go and buy bonds outside there in order to push in the liquidity, etc. Et cetera. The South African Reserve Bank recently went out there and bought back some of, 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 of the bonds just to, pull, to put in the, some more money in, in, in circulation. But in South Africa, we do not have the, the comfort that they have in countries like the US in that our inflation in South Africa, it was announced the latest figures for March this year is 4.1% coming from 4.6 in, in February. So with that inflation, if ever you start pumping money which you do not have, what is going to have is we're going to have the inflation rate going out of the three to six percent target inflation rate, rate range. And if that happens, then whatever we do in South Africa will be un, uh, undermined by that inflation. So the government is still committed to maintaining a very low inflation. Because if ever I've got a very high inflation in a country, it means whatever you, you can have your workers saying they want 25 percent salary increase. And if ever you increase the money which is in circulation by 21%, by 25%, it means whatever you give them will not help because it means it, because when we're talking about inflation, we're simply saying the money which I have today and the money which I will have next year, if ever what I can buy next year with my money is less than what I could buy this year with the same amount of money, the difference between the two is inflation. You do not want to say then, I'm giving you more money next year and only to find that you can buy less. So that's why we don't, want in, we don't want inflation. So people must forget about printing money. I know in, in, in Uganda, when, when, the, when, when the former uh, ruler there, Idi Amin, was, was asked about money, he said simply print more. They printed more money and you know what happened to, to the Uganda. economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So now we are told, Prof, that um, this 500 billion is about 10% of our GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, you made a comment earlier that, uh, look, that's what we could get. Uh, I just wanted to say comparatively with other countries that have gone the same route to come up with packages, how are we doing? Okay. We are unfortunately in a different league. In America, in America, they've been dealing with, deficit, with, with budgetary deficits all along. So the, we cannot compare ourselves with America. So in America, they've pumped in trillions, which they do not have, but they'll get away with it. Why? Because with, Amer with America, it is the benchmark currency in the world. So you know that when, you, when you're going to many countries in Africa, they've got their own currencies, but for you to buy them, you've got to buy the American dollar in order to access them. You go to Singapore, they've got their own currency, but you'll buy the American dollar in order to, 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 to get to the Singapore currency. So that is one thing which, is, which has helped them. In South Africa, we do, not, we do not have that. So what happens then is the money which we are going to budget for this must be the money which we have and not play around with currencies. You know, when they announced the Moody's downgrade, the rand went down significantly. When Fitch 
calculated as from translators already, the money went down significantly. And this week, just two days back, we had the rand really plummeting because of many other things which are happening in the country. So we must be very careful about how and where we source our money if we do not do the thing, whatever we're trying to correct may actually go down as cause well. more trouble. Because we were told yesterday that it's IMF, um, it's the BRICS the, bank, the new, yeah, uh, the it, yes, bank. the new bank, uh, you know, in the BRICS grouping, uh, is, 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 is African well, Development Bank and all of that. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming they, that uh, they may not be as generous as the one percent that IMF, you know, gave. <laughs> that, that's exactly that's exactly the point, and that's why then when we actually make these commitments, we must make sure then that they are not going to go out of control. Because as I've said, I'm very comfortable with the with the speech that this president made yesterday, but yeah. I have asked the question: Is this sustainable? And why am I asking that one even before I deal with the actual figures? In South Africa, we do have a culture of entitlement. So how do you give people an increase for six months? In six months, then in, 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 in November, you say, well, to, back to what we're paying you in March 2020. We'll have many of those people in the streets, toy toying and destroying even the things which they, they need, because we, we are very violent when, when, when you say you are setting our, our rights. And what will happen with, with many of us, we will, be, we will not be bold enough to say this is unacceptable. It was said from the beginning that this will stop in, 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 in October. So I hope the, the president and the, his advisors did think about that when they said, let us give this money. Because sometimes it is not just the good deeds that count, but you must think up, 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 about the unintended consequences. But this is not the time to deal with that. The time, what we must ask is, is this money going to help in any way? And my answer is yes, it is going to help because South Africa is a consumption-led economy. What do I mean by consumption-led economy? In South Africa, when the consumers have got less money and they can buy less, then what happens is many of our businesses go down because they depend on those people. So you must always have this high circulation of money. And there was very little circulation of money as is now because of this national lockdown, et cetera. Hence, they had to push in the money the money that we do, not, we, we, do, we do not have. But we must think about what is going to happen after October. But for all, in all intents and, and purposes, adding, moving the money to, by trend returns for the child support grant for May, and then moving it by 500 rands for the next five months for, for child support grant, I think that is more than enough. And then, Adding 250 to all the other types of social grants is, 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 is more than adequate. So I am comfortable that the government has done more than what it, it can afford. And then when we move to the 350... That's the one I want I wanted yeah, to ask Yeah, because many people are one. asking about it. I want to ask about that one because we've been having people talking about basic income grant and all of that. Is this that basic income grant coming through the back door now with this 350? I think some people are, are, are actually testing the basic income grant, and I do have a problem with the basic income grant, and I'll tell you why. We do have a problem actually making sure that there, there is no corruption and fraud with our existing social grant level. We must remember that the people who are, only, who are paying the pay as you earn, income taxes, individual taxes, personal taxes, in South Africa are less than 9 million. And you've got more than 18 million people are getting the different types of social grants. It is unsustainable. Even the less than 9 million I'm talking about who are, pay, who are paying yeah, the personal taxes, the pool is coming down, down, down 
because people are losing jobs, etc. So this special type of, 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 of a grant, 850 runs, I think that is reasonable. It may be sustainable for now. But when, when we are saying that try, some people are trying to push the basic income grant, the basic income grant simply says everyone in the country will be given this grant, whether you're working or not, just to, to make sure then that everyone can live on that one. But we do not have in, uh, enough money to go around like that. Because when you're doing that thing, you must make sure that it can be sustainable. In, uh, in the United Kingdom, they, they, they used to have the, that DAO system, which is not working as well as it, as, as it worked in the past. Because even with the United Kingdom, they, England, they have problems as, as it is now. So who are we in South Africa to come up with such things? So we must be very careful that when you come up with something, it can be sustainable. So um, um, other um, problems. Yeah, I was gonna say, Prof, you know, there's a warning that you, you just mentioned earlier that come October, because now these guys who are obviously not employed and they're getting the 350 every month. And then what happens in November now? What if they want that 350? Yet it was announced that it's for six months. It's not, now, that, it's not, it's not that if they want that, they will, they will say, we, we want, the, this 350 is not even enough, we want more. That is what is going to happen. So in, in this Zulu, there's a term which, which says, Uzwa, Uzwa, Aman, when you are yeah. trying to test the waters, I think this is what this is going to do. But I'm telling you, it's not going to be sustainable. And the other administrative problems linked to this, of course. I mean, with one of the radio stations, I had to try and, and, and deal with this thing. And people were phoning and saying, so who do we contact in order to, to, to get this? So we need more information on how people can be on the database. And this thing starts in May. So how, how soon can everyone be there? And how do they qualify and, and, and all those things? Let us wait and see if ever we can learn from this. But I'm not really so hopeful, even though it is a good gesture. But a good gesture is not enough if ever you cannot deliver in the future because it is not sustainable. No, this morning I listened to another radio station and the CEO of Sasa was trying to explain the mechanics of how this money is going to be, you know, uh, taken uh, or delivered to, to the beneficiaries. And she said it's going to be, uh, they're going to be using the home affairs database and SARS database and UIF database, you know, so that uh, people will have to, you know, use their IDs and whatever. And there's a process, but yes, you're right. Let's listen. Let's wait for them to actually give the details. Uh, but she seemed very confident that with the systems that they have in place, uh, they will be able to do it seamlessly. However, we do know that there are challenges, even with the current, uh, you know, uh, grants via SASA, where there's a lot of ghost uh, people, you know, who are not supposed to get what they are getting. Uh, and so now when you've got so many people who are unemployed, who have to be put in, in the system, uh, you know, then that gives you more worry. But anyway, uh, Prof, you know- but on, you on, on, a, on, on a lighter note, Dr. Nyati, on that one about corruption in South Africa and fraud when it comes to these things. You know, one university vice chancellor was, was mentioning humorously during a graduation ceremony that gee we did not know so that we've got so many children here at, at the university with parents because with many with many students who are on NASFAS they always say they are orphans and then yes. we've got the parents saying kiki zaling they and saying my child my granddaughter etc so the same thing is happening with with with, with the ghost recipients of the South African grant, grant system. So will this add to, to that? Let us hope not. I don't want to be a skeptic. Yes, yes. We do have a corruption and fraud challenge in South Africa. 
we are adding another category where people may host unemployed people. But, uh, you know, uh, there's been a lot of people who were now threatening, you know, uh, to cause havoc because there's no food. So, so, so others are saying that 350 will go a long way to ensuring that people have got food. Um, I'm even happier that uh, the mind-altering beverages uh, for now, uh, people are not uh, <laughs> people are not going to be having access to them because uh, some people would actually use that 350 uh, to go and, and and buy those. So uh, yeah, now so prof, so that that that, that was um, the relief for those who are unemployed. Can you continue uh, about the relief in the different areas? Then let let us. Go to, let us go to the business side. I'll, I may come back to the to individuals and, and personal side. With, with, with business side, because as I said, we are looking at lives and also livelihoods. If ever businesses, there is a projection already that after this lockdown, thousands of companies will close down and hundreds of thousands of people will lose their jobs. And by the end of this year, we may be talking about millions. I don't want to, to be a, 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 a scaremonger. The government has come up with very interesting measures where they say, all right, they are going to expedite the refunds, vet refunds. But when they do that, which is good, the problem is we already have a problem with corruption with vet refunds. So if ever they do it so, so quickly, which is good, then it may actually create more corruption and fraud. But one, uh, the two other things or three that they came up with, which I love the most, they said they are going to allow companies to keep, okay, it's called a deferral. Of the PAYE. 35% of the money that they have collected for pay as you earn. And then who pay, pay the other 65% and keep on doing that until they are okay. I wanted to explain that one because some people were thinking there is now a new tax of 35%. Of and I was listening to some very educated people saying Yes. And I did not I, want to enter. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. Actually, it's one of the things in my Facebook page this morning, I thought, no man, uh, people misunderstand this. And in another interview that I had earlier today, uh, you know, on the same platform, uh, somebody mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, the parent nearly had a heart attack hearing that <laughs> PAYE is being increased by 35%. So I had to correct that, you know. So maybe can you correct that, Prof, because there seems to be a lot of people who don't understand that this was more about business, not individuals. Okay, now let me explain. Okay, the word which is used for this is deferral. So you defer the, the, the submission of the, pay, of the payee amounts. Because what, hap what happens, the company takes some amount from the employees and they are supposed to move it over to SARS immediately. But what will happen here, because many companies have had problems, the government has said then, of when you collect the money from the employees for some months, you cannot, don't just push it all to, uh, if you want to give it all, that's good. But if you cannot, you can keep the 35% as a company and give us 65% and then you'll keep on doing that thing. And we're not going to penalize you for that for, for a number of months until things get better. So it's the deferral of submission of the money forwarding it to SARS, which applies to businesses. We, as the people who are being paid salaries, this will have nothing to do with us. There's no 35% which we are going to pay extra or, or be penalized for what the, government, the company has not done because the government has given them the the opportunity to delay that. So there won't be any interest. Uh, uh, there will be no penalties. Did they say to the employer? Yes, I'm talking about to the employer. Yes. Um, 
will there be an interest or no no no, no penalties no interest yes for a number of months on yes yes and then yes. the other thing which is linked to that one is with the skills levy they said with the skills levy levy as well as you know that the companies have got to put something towards the skills one percent of the net profit yes project. So the, the, government, the government said, okay, we can give you a six months holiday of some sort for that one, or you can pay it later. So this at least is going to minimize the, the compulsory payments that, that companies have got to make. Because many companies, many companies are at zero revenue as it is because of the lockdown. And well, of course, there's one meaningless one where they see they will delay the, the payments of, of the carbon tax by companies for one month, et cetera. For many, many companies really are not very much into, into that, but it shows that the government actually wanted to do something to minimize the tax liability of companies in order for them to have more operational capital. And this uh, tax deferral, my understanding is that it is for the one up to 35% is for companies whose turnover, annual turnover is 100 million and below. Yes, up to 100 million. But then that, that was the question then, what about those who are, who are, who are, who are at, 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 at more than 100 million? Those can, 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 can actually negotiate separately with with SARS because you, you know that you cannot make over a hundred million if you have not made something up to a million. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So but it was no, to protect they, the smaller they will, companies. They will deal with it on a case by case uh, basis. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and do you think that is right? That is right. Under 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 the circumstances, because things are bad outside there. Many many companies have been affected. But Dr. Dr. Nyati, before we come to an end, let me come up with something which the government has not addressed and which needs to be addressed. You've got many professionals outside there who are self-employed. They, they, they do not qualify for any of the relief schemes announced by the government. I'm counting their lawyers, not because I'm a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that we are, we are affected such that the, the, the bar, the Society of Advocates, has actually come up with a scheme to try and help some of the lawyers who are actually going that under because of these things. And they've got plumbers and carpenters, etc., who will not qualify under this. How will they survive? So unfortunately in life, you cannot come up with a scheme which will cover everyone. That's why then many of us are saying, even though the government wants to make sure then that there is no abrupt end to, to the national lockdown. What was suggested, the phase down of the national lockdown must take these things into consideration. And that takes me back to what I keep on saying, let us balance lives and life. So Prof, um... People who've got spazanyana, you know, and 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 and, and chisanyama, you know, uh, you know, around the corner there, Gomlazi. Uh, they they, they ask him for them. Yes, they ask him for that one. I was not going to go to each and every different scheme. Yeah. They ask, they ask him for for people who has the spaza types, SMMEs, etc. Et, 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 et People must read that speech from yesterday and then the, the other supplementary documents. There they, 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 they is, they is a certain other document that people must actually look at, which actually say, if we do this, what do we do? If, we, if this happens, what can we, can we do? It is attached there. Let us read all those things. But so the that's, circumstances are comfortable. Yes, yes. So like you've been saying, it's about saving of lives on one side, but it's also about the livelihoods. You know, the other side is more around economy issues. The other one is about life and death issues. 
Now, yeah. there is a talk around the reopening of the economy. Uh, we, were, we, we had this uh, when we were being told that there's going to be an extension of the lockdown. And now we had it again yesterday. Uh, any ideas, if you, if, if, you know, around how this is going to be done, which are those industries? I know that the mining has started a little bit uh, to, 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 to operate. Uh, so when they're talking about this reopening of the economy, your, your, your thoughts around that, uh, Prof? I, I, I like it, Dr. Nyat, when you say some thoughts, my thoughts around this thing, because I thought you were now trying to push me to a corner which where one of our ministers, a very popular minister, found himself being quoted incorrectly that he simply said this. No, I have no inside information. But base, I'm basing what I'm going to say on what was said at last week's uh, presentation by Dr. Zolim Kize and Prof. Abdul Karim. We need to have, we don't want to have an abrupt stop to this. We need to have a gradual phase down. So there are industries which can easily open now, like the professional, pro, pro, professional businesses, et cetera. And there are businesses where they can have a scale down of these things as it has happened with, with mining. So let us hear, let us not preempt, let us hear what the president is going to say tomorrow evening. Because as he has already told us that he is going to address us tomorrow and he has learned something, which there's something he did not do yesterday. He did not. <laughs> fellow South Africans. My fellow South Africans. So, Whatever he's going to say, let us wait for him and then he's going to guide us. But I am sure that the type of restrictions that we have currently up to next Thursday, some of them will fall off, but some may re remain so that they have this gradual phase down of the yes. restrictions. So generally, Prof, you, you feel within the constraints that we have as a country, you know, a, in Kumbuza, you know, when we were still young and you ask for money from your grand grandmother or grandparent, they sometimes take, e, you know, e, 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 I won't call it a wallet, but by God, like, you know, we took as much as we, we could to try and come up with this package, you know? Um, and so uh, you're generally happy that this is the best we could do under the circumstances. Yes. And in fact, what we've referred to in passing about parents taking out things and say, you see, there's no money. There's yes. something which I do within my, within my family. I'm sure many people don't, don't do it. I literally discuss the finances with the kids to say, this is the situation. So no one can, can come at four o'clock thinking that they're going to take chances and say, give me what they know that I do not have. So the more we do that thing and we're transparent, the easier it is to handle the situation. So in South Africa, those who are going, who are going to say they're going to go out to a toying because they want more money, which you do not have, will just be mischievous and that's it. Now, listening to, to the, you know, other stakeholders like, you know, the unions uh, and, 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 and the other stakeholders that were consulted, it sounds like, you know, um, the, it's a rare situation where they, they, you know, everyone is talking in one voice, you know? Which is good uh, for South in the, in, in the, in, What they call it now, uh, network, you know? They're the different mm -hmm. party, you know? Everyone is talking in one. I listened to somebody from Kosato today, and uh, they are like, and these are the people who a few weeks ago were saying, don't touch IMF. IMF. <laughs> you know? But today, they were actually talking uh, and, and actually in support. And, and I thought, wow, okay, you know, sometimes the South Africans were able to pull in one direction, even political parties, you know, they seem to be pulling in one direction. Okay, there's one political party that has come up with a smart lockdown situation, um, you know, um, but generally most of them, they, 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 they are talking uh, this, the same language. Now, looking at that, you know, it, before the lockdown, many people had question marks about, you know, the leadership of our current president. 
that no, his consultative style is this and that, you know, he doesn't make decisions. But we've seen a very different man during COVID-19. There's been a lot of decisive action, consultation, yes, uh, getting people together, but also decisive where he has to be decisive. You know, uh, what has been your take in terms of how he has led the country during this period? No, it, 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 it was very good, but I think I want us to desist from the situation where we make it a one-person thing, because that's when it starts yes. the, the, the bad cult systems. It is a collective. You have a number of different ministers dealing who take a lot of strain from people attacking them, and later on people understand. Let me leave you with this particular one. As it is now, people after Moody's downgraded us and they saw the run going down. And yesterday we actually had one of the major entities who could not pay their bond. Okay. Yes, could, yes. At, at, at the cultural people, bank. People, people, people see that things are bad. There is that is a cosa saying, Yazi Kingra now. Eh. Realize now, Witty, this is no joke. Yes, in one hour. Hence, we must all bend together. In this is all they say, Sisha is not together in order to make sure Oguti is in one hour. So, uh, Prof, uh, thank you for your time. I know this is your family time that I've stolen, uh, but, uh, but uh, before we close this discussion, uh, you are a, an ardent supporter of uh, Kaiser Chiefs. Manje, uh, in terms of the league, uh, see me guys, the Kaiser Chiefs e, e league. No, it's, 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 it's obvious, because with the next team, Sundowns, hey. they've, got one, they've got one game in hand, and they are, four, they are four points behind. So even if they play the same number of, of, of games with case achieves, they'll still be below. So they must just give case achieves their cup once and for all. Why be stingy really and and be greedy to have everything? I mean case achieves has been this thing for a long time. It's not that it must be done a favor, but this hey. on they must just give chiefs what chiefs be deserves. It has happened in other countries already. And this yes. will be for pool soon. Yes. Hey, I want to like Prof. You know, at least uh, uh, you know it's been thirty years since they last won something. My year about thirty-one, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, they must just be giving. They must just be giving their, their, their cup. And with Liverpool, yeah. even more obvious than a twenty-five points difference. No one yeah. will come. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, Prof, uh, I know that you you you. you you are good with old school music. Uh, from time to time, you know, you will hoi some 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 music there. Uh, so to encourage Abantu Ulenkinga Sibuyo Manje COVID-19, which song uh, from 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 uh, old school do you think would be appropriate to uplift Abantu? Uh, uh, you know, as they deal with all the uncertainties of COVID. I think um, I will encourage uh, them to play the OGs a prayer. Mm. When, when, when things are bad then, and you, 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 you sit down and, and you pray, then God will listen to you. But then I can also take them to classical music. They must play Felix, Felix Mendelssohn's song or him be not afraid and if, if ever they play that and pray there won't be fear yeah bonga prof thank you very much you know we had to do this today and uh, we have done it and it was very good uh, i thank you so much uh, prof but this thing about seven and you, please, my prof, what is it? I don't know. It, 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 it just happened. Eh? You come from a family of seven. Uh, 
you know, and uh, you stayed in, 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 in jail and came out on the seventh month. You've got seven degrees in jail. Everything you have on seven, I'm going to go <laughs> oh, maybe. I'm not a gambling type, but you, you know that with the gambling people, they talk about triple seven. Hey. Yeah, so maybe it has something to do with that. Yes, yes. No, Prof. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, good night. And, uh, and also thank, thank you. you to all the viewers who managed uh, to join us. Uh, apologies for the earlier technical issues, uh, but uh, we will uh, play this again. Uh, Prof, I'll also send it uh, to you so that... Uh, your family can uh, be able to to follow it. So I want to no, thank do, you. Do, do tell them that I am BBC. That is our born before computers. Yes. So to come and help here, kids <laughs> only come up with solutions. <laughs> but, yes, no, no, no. But she was able uh, to actually upgrade your, your 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 Zoom app. <laughs> That's why now we have sound, which we couldn't get earlier. But anyway, thank you very much, Prof. And. Uh, a good night to you and also good night to all uh, our viewers who joined us on the various uh, social media platforms. Thank you very much. And of course. All right.